testimony. God knows what's right and he knows what's wrong. And we just want him to search us. Turn the spotlight from heaven down on our soul. And if you find anything, y'all hear me say anything, that should not be. Lord, we want you to take it out and straighten me because I want to be right. I want to be saved and I want to be holy. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning to each and every one of you. This is the Higher Ground Outreach Church of God in Christ. Coming to you live and in color from 132 yes. Bank Street, right here in the beautiful city of Suffolk, Virginia. Yes. And we thank God for having a mindset yes. that he's given us that won't God to search us. Yes. And as we're praying and asking God yes. to do those things and got our chopping list, we yes. want to make sure that we're in the will of God yes. and that God is pleased with our lives. Yes. So we admonish you to, to like and to share as we go forth in the service on this morning. We're expecting great things of the yes. Lord today. Yes. God has done great things for great. us. Yes. And we're yes. we are blessed. We are a living testimony of what the Lord has done. And he's yet in the blessing business. And you, are, at this time, you are able to call on our prayer line and our yes. prayer ministry. Yes. And that number to dial is 757-692-8580. Yes. And as our manner is, we start out our services with Amen. prayer. Yes. And prayer is want to be made. The Bible tells us that the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person does indeed avail much. And we've got results of prayer. Yes, we got folks that have been healed, that have been set free, and that have been delivered. And God delivered the minds of the people and set free those that are bound. That's what prayer will do. And the prayer changes things. But I added a little footnote, prayer changes people also. Because the more you pray and get in communion with God, it changes your perspective. It changes your attitude. It changes your outlook on life. So I say, God, do what need be done in these persons' lives. And we ask at this time, as Elder Michael Eden would come, and he would lead us forth in prayer. And whatever your prayer concern is this morning, give it to God. Hallelujah. And God will hear and answer your prayer. That's what he does. He is our Jehovah Rapha. He is our healer. Hallelujah. We thank God for peace. Amen. And he is our Jehovah Shalom. Yes, He's coming at this time and offer prayer on every heart and mind. Pray with him as he comes. Let's say amen. Amen. Father, we are so thankful and grateful for the opportunity yes, and the privilege yes. which thou hast granted unto us through your yes, precious Lord. blood. Yes. We come back, O God, to exalt ourselves and to lift up your name. Look yes. where you brought us from. Then, Lord, look at the price Lord, that you yes. paid, Lord, that we might live because of your redemption. Here we come again. And then, Lord, we humble our heart. We humble our mind. Yes. God, we, we say that we have fallen. We made a mistake. We have error. We have not always had the mind to walk right and to live right. But God and grace. Even now, Lord, we sing this song, search me, Lord. Let me be transparent. You know, Lord, over the fight that we have to go through. You know, Lord, over when our temptation come. You know, Lord, over the air of our way. Even so, Lord, today, because you offered unto us your salvation. We need, God, all your deliverance. We stretch forth our hearts to me. He said, Lord, help us to more. Save us to more. Deliver them more. Wash me the more. In the name of Jesus. God, we don't want to make your name a reproach. Oh my God, we don't want to go to embarrass your name, but God, we want to lift up your name because God, you paid the ultimate sacrifice. And then God, we thank you because God, only because of you, we stand. Only because of you, God, that we're able God, to lift up our hands. You know, God, and we're able God, to lift up holy hands before you. We're able God, to walk right. We're able to talk right. Only because of you, we take no credit for the things that you've done.
heaven. Even so, Lord, we come up again based on your mercy, based on your grace, based on your favor in the name of Jesus. The devil is a liar. I'm coming again, Lord. It's me again, Lord. I need your help. I need your strength. I need your direction. In the name of Jesus. Sometimes my judgment gets clouded. Sometimes, God, we make wrong decisions. Sometimes we pray without you. Sometimes we react for God to our flesh. But even so, Lord, I'm coming again to Lord. Wash me over and over and over again. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for the salvation. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for brand new mercy. Thank you for brand new grace. Even now, Lord, I humble my heart. I humble my way before you, God. Lead me and guide me. Direct our path. In the name of Jesus. So many of God today are hurt. So many of God are faith will go with life critical decisions. But I pray, God, help us again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You God, sometimes God, we go ahead of you, God. Sometimes God, that we always get in trouble, and then God, we rely on you. But help us again, God, to come back again at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light. And because of you, Lord, I'm able again, God, to submit myself again. Yes, Lord, have your divine way, God. Today there are crises in all of our family, there are situations in all of our family. But God, I'm looking yet unto Thee, the Author and the Finisher. Yes, Lord, in the name of yes. Jesus. And as I stand before you, I dare not hold my peace. Oh, my God, that blind bottom male, he cried out, oh, God, save us the more. Yes, Lord. Oh, my God, help us again. Yes, Lord. This day, God, that God, when you come to save us, this day, God, you came to deliver. Yes, God, help us, oh God, that our coming won't be in vain. Help us again, that our prayer won't be in vain. We need your help. We need your deliverance. Yes, Lord, we need you to work in the hearts of God. You know, Lord, what's in our mind. You know, Lord, today, our heart. You know, Lord, our stubbornness. You know, Lord. Help us again, God, to be transparent. Yes, Lord, today, your word says, oh, God, acknowledge your fault in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, today, many times, oh, God, today, our thinking is not right. But, oh, my God. Again, I'm coming again. Yes, so I said, help me today in the name of Jesus. And then, Lord, when you find anything that's in our heart that's not according to the riches of you, will wash me again, save me the more, deliver the more. In the name of Jesus. Oh my God, even now, God, as we're praying for the, the prayer request box, I will mother you, God, and the saint everywhere. Oh God, the bereaved families, oh God. Yes, Lord. People, oh God, they need your help. Don't know where to turn. Looking, oh God, for deliverance in all the wrong places. But have your way, God. We're looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Help us again to own our heart. Help us again, oh God, to own our way. Yes, Lord. Help us to come close in your humility in the name of Jesus. Because, God, we are children, God. And as children, God, sometimes, God, we think we know what's right. As children, God, sometimes we make our own decisions without you. But, oh, God, help us to be obedient children, to walk in the light. And you are in the light. Have your divine way. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, because you are a very present help, God, in anything, God. And you, God, today, want to bless us. You want to exalt us. But, oh, my God, as we come, help to have a surrendered heart, a surrendered will. I surrender my everything and withholding nothing in the name of Jesus. God, today, have your divine way. In this service, oh, God, speak again, God. In this service again, oh, God, open understanding to the things I don't know. Yes, Lord. Did God give that anything, any hidden people did, any other gender, God, help us again, God, to admit, God, I need your help. In the name of Jesus, bind the spirit of being ashamed. Bind the spirit of pride, God. In the name of Jesus, bind the spirit of being arrogant, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. I need your help. 
saturate this place. Did the help of God lift up holy hands and say thank you for another day. Thank you for your redemption. Thank you for binding the enemy. Thank you for another day of grace. I'm standing here only because of your grace. I didn't do anything. I didn't deserve to be here. But God and the blood today. Help us to not to live in the night. But oh God, every day I need your help. Every minute, every hour, I need you, Lord. I can't do it without you. I can't live right without you. Hallelujah. Here I am again. Yes, Lord. And I thank you. In the name of Jesus. I pray, God, to help us again to walk by faith and not by what I see. Oh, God, the self of Elisha, he was confused, God. He didn't see your presence. God, he saw trouble all around him. And the servant said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. Oh, my God. And you open his eyes. Help us to open our eyes to realize like you're greater than, you're bigger than, whatever life circumstances. You are more, oh, God, than a conqueror. In the name of Jesus, help us to not to walk in fear. Help us to walk in faith. You got an angel, oh God, and can't run about it, oh God. Yes, Lord, dispatch everyone at your word. In the name of Jesus, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You brought us, God. You delivered us, God. Even now, my hope is built on nothing left but Jesus' blood and your righteousness. Help us, God. Help us today. Help us, Lord. Break every door. Break every fetter. In the name of Jesus. Thank you today. Then, God, we pray, God, for Pastor Carter. Thank you for you calling him. Thank you for you ordained. Thank God he's your children. Send a word. Send our deliverance. Send our breakthrough. Lord, today, whatever it is, God, whether rebuke, whether exaltation, send the word, God. And then, God, I pray, God, and David going to recognize his fault. Oh, God, he said, I've sinned before heaven. I've sinned before heaven, oh, God, to realize I'm standing in need. In the name of Jesus. Here we are today, God. In the name of Jesus. Then God, today, as we sing song, search me, Lord. Do a thorough examination. Let me be transparent because all of our ways, God, we have to agree with you. God, my flesh objects to your God, to your grace. My flesh objects to your mercy. But God, in my spirit, I say, yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I agree, God, that your way is right and all my ways are wrong. Help us again today. As I come, God, I submit, I humble my heart, I humble my way. Everything I've done wrong, God, I'm ashamed of it. And I come before and say, Lord, it's me, God. And I need your help. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All our mother, God, all the sick and afflicted, those who ask for prayer, those of us who close and fall, have your way again. In the name of Jesus, the enemy will persist us like we. But God and grace and mercy and the privilege of this great salvation help us again today. As we come again, God, uh, 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 as you stretch out your hand, help us again to receive, oh God, of God in the name of Jesus. And then God will be so careful to give you the praise because the glory and all of the honor, they belong unto you. This is our prayer that we offer unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Wash me over again. Wash me over again. In your precious love. Wash me over if you will. Hallelujah. Oh, wash me over.
and as Jesus touched along the way, how do you see men now? He was blind. He saw ministry, but sometimes we need another touch. Yes, sir. How do y'all know sometimes we need another touch? Lord, wash me over again. I need another touch from God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Let me bless your hearts, and we appreciate every prayer that's been put up on for us on our behalf. We want God to wash us over again. Thank God. At this time, I'm going to ask my own very own wife, yes. uh, First Lady Missionary Woo! Alma Carter, yes, and, and my sweetheart, and my yes. lady, Queen, she coming yes. at this time for the read our scripture this morning. Let's amen for her, she coming. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. From the King James Version, 27th Psalm. Yes. The Lord is my life yes, and my sir. salvation. Well, whom it? shall I fear? Yes, the Lord is the strength of my life. Yes. Of whom shall I be afraid? Yes. When the wicked, even my enemies, yes. and foes, yes. came upon me to eat it from my flesh, yes. they stumbled and failed. Yes. Though a host should encamp yes. against me, yes. my heart shall not fear. Yes. Though war should rise against me, yes. in this will I be comforted. Yes. One thing One have I desired that I will seek out, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. In the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in his secret place, his tabernacle. Shall he hide me? He shall set me up upon a rock, and now shall my head be lifted up. And above my enemies, Yes. Sacrifices yes. of joy. Yes. Amen. Wow. And the last verse, verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Yes. Yes. Be of yes. good courage. Yes. And he yes. shall strengthen yes. thy heart. Wait, yes. I say, yes. on the Lord. You may be seated in the sanctuary. We're so glad. Uh, for our prayer for the scripture reading on this morning. The Lord is good yes, sir. and greatly to be praised. Uh, we'd like, as we would, to continue to like and to share as we go forth through the broadcast even on this morning. And I'm just so excited and so glad what the Lord is doing. Yes, sir. We appreciate all of our guests and all of our loved ones that are here with us on this yeah, morning. Yeah. Special thanks to my friend, amen, all the way from Nebraska. Amen. 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 God got folks everywhere. That's one, even one of the remote places of God's vineyard. Yeah. But God got his saints everywhere. Yeah. We appreciate him on today. Yeah. And we thank God for all of you that are here. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, and I'm yeah. yet rejoicing. And I'm yet glad in it. Yeah. I'm thanking God for what he's going to do. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to get thanking God for what he's going to do. Yeah. He's already done something, but I appreciate yeah. what he's going to do even yeah. before. So we ask that you continue to uh, pray for us. We do want to invite you to any and all of our services here at the church. Yeah. Uh, as we, our announcements go, I would like to say that each, every Tuesday and every Friday, amen. But before I go there, I thank God for our Afro-Latino brothers and sisters. They're yeah. watching. I was yeah. just looking at the review on just a few moments. Good morning. Buenos uh, dias <laughs> to our Afro-American show. Um, Brothers and sisters all the way down in, in Colombia. Sister Michelle, God bless your daughter. Amen. We're praying for you and your family and our Afro-Latino uh, community uh, that we're praying for them in particular. So keep them in your prayers as we move forward. But we thank God for all of you that are here, our local uh, assembly that is here in the congregation, uh, all of our loved ones that have joined us on this great day. Uh, this is indeed the day that the Lord has made, uh, and we are yet rejoicing and glad in it. Yeah. So as I was saying that, we invite you to our services that take place every Tuesday and every Friday is our intercessory prayer uh, that takes place at 12 noon. And you can go right to our website address, yeah. www.hgocogic.com, and tune right in to the prayer. We've got prayer results and things by which God has worked miracles yeah. on behalf of those. We yes. were praying for our brother, Brother Kevin. He's doing great. Yes. Amen. Brother Kevin Jefferson, I like the business in him. Lord is in the business. Lord is in the healing business. Hallelujah. God is in the healing business. Amen. And sometimes, even as they went, I think that's what the scripture says. Now they laid his hands on him, and a blind man and a leper, and even as he went, he was healed, just like he's doing yes, now. And if God don't do it instantaneously, it's still in the process. God is in the healing business. And I thank you for his healing worship. 
So tune in with them as they pray and as they intercede for the many that have come, sometimes cannot pray for themselves. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you may think I'll never be in a position that I can't pray for myself. Wow. But sometimes life can get you a gut punch yes. Yes. and knock the air and knock the wind out of you. Yes. And it takes somebody that's going to be praying on your behalf. Yes. Thank God for intercessors. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank God for those persons that will help us to get through our difficult situation. Yes. And join us also on our Tuesday night Bible study, uh, which takes place at 7.30 p.m. every Tuesday night at that same website address. Uh, we thank God for those persons that have been participating uh, and engaging themselves in the Bible study. And it really has been an engaging Bible study. And we thank God for what has been done and what we're talking about talking about some real life issues and Amen. situations that sometimes people want to avoid. Yes, but sir. I'm one of the persuasion that some stuff we need to talk about. Amen. God has a remedy. Jesus is the answer. Yes, and sometimes when we try to ignore that, we still got to come back to the source. Yes. He's already put it out in his word. His word is unchanging. He's the same yesterday and today and forevermore. Amen. And all we got to go back and do is go back and research and quote what he wrote and look what he said already in his word. And you will find out that God was right all along. Amen. Amen. So these current issues that we're dealing with is nothing new. It has happened before. Yes. Hallelujah. And as we said this morning, if it's new, it's not true. Amen. Because what has happened before yes, has come around and yes. come full circle one yes, more sir. time. Right. So we ask that you continue to pray and believe God and participate. In our Bible study sessions, yes, it's a beautiful opportunity yes. for you to share on un, uh, un being not you're not being judged, of course, and you can come and offer your questions, and hopefully we'll receive some answers. If we don't have the answer, we know where to go to get them. Yes, so you won't have to leave at the same way that you came. So keep Amen. that in mind as you go forth. And I thank God for everything that has been said and done. And it would be remiss on my part not to thank you. I uh, thank all of you that participated in our celebration on yesterday. <laughs> for having a second chance. Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, some of us have had second chances. I thank God for another chance. I may have had another chance. Oh, I've messed up before. I've not been the perfect example or the perfect parent or the perfect husband, but God gave me another chance. And we ought to give God praise. If God gave you another chance, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, for another chance to get it right this time have to go down that way. And God, I thank you for another chance to allow me to be able to participate and to behold those persons that came to celebrate with us on last evening. What a beautiful occasion that it was. Thank God for our children that took off a Herculean. I call it a Herculean effort. Amen. That really was a Hercules that needed to be uh, called for this situation and bring it together. Sister Tremaine, Brother Corey, Amen, Sister Pam, and just all of you that helped and assisted, that, that, that they did the decoration, did everything. They left us out of the loop, and I said maybe that was what the doctor ordered. Some stuff we need to let folk take care of. Amen, and they did a wonderful job. Come on, let's give them another hand. And uh, we are, we are yet feeling the after effects, amen. I couldn't really sleep because I was hyped up. I said, God, you got to help us today and we can have strength in you. And just glad to see all of you in this place. A church family, kept yeah. my, my heart just goes out. And I thank you. Yeah. I thank you. I thank you one more time. And I'm humbled at the fact that you have taken the time out of your schedules to come and to be a blessing to us. So thank you for all the love, of our expressions yeah. of love and support that you have offered unto us during this season. And we're in this season of birthdays, of course. My wife has celebrated hers, and I'm in between. We're in between birthdays. So I, I'm not going to do the whole month. I'm not going to put y'all through that. Amen. But y'all already gone through the month of May. But we're in the month of June. And we celebrate with our June babies. Amen. And, of course, it was, I thank God for Sister Sherelle that she starts the month out on June the 13th, celebrating her birthday. Amen. <laughs> and yours truly on the 14th, I think. Amen. We thank God for that. And I thank his brother Trenton Holloman. I think his birthday is in the month of June. Uh, brother Trent Holloman, um, I'll get my information together after a while, but I know there are some other persons in the month of June, but y'all give me that information and we'll be sure to mention that. Well, let's say happy birthday to our June babies. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for what you've done. Uh, so bear those announcements in mind. And as a way of announcement, those persons that are supporting us through the ministry, we appreciate all your gifts of love and 
we do have giving means and platforms by which you can participate in, even on this morning as I speak. You can give this morning at a time in your offering, and thank God for the uh, technology that we're now being able to take advantage of. Yes. Uh, through the Cash App application, yes. you can go right now to the dollar sign CCEFC uh, and contribute with the tithe and offering, or if you decide to do it another way, uh, through the Givelify method. You can go right to your phone, right to your app. Go to the Givelify app, right to the Higher Ground Outreach Church. We're the only ones on Bank Street, so you won't get it confused. There are some other higher grounds, but we don't want to make sure that you get the right higher grounds. I was praying on yesterday, and I don't want to divert too far, but I was praying. I say, Lord, and do this and do that, and, and then I say, well, I got to make sure that I'm not talking about another kind of Jesus. Uh -huh. So I had to go back and retract and say, I'm talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes. There was other Jesus is doing his time, but there was only one Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So that made it specific and particular to him. So I'm saying this is higher ground on Bank Street. Yes. You won't get it confused with the other higher ground, but make sure you get the one on Bank Street and you'll make sure that you got the right one. So as you're giving your tithes and your offering, you can go to those medium uh, platforms of giving. And you can also give over across the table, which is our traditional way. And we still do it the old-fashioned way uh, when it comes to giving and support of the ministry. God is up to something. Yes, sir. And I believe there is a blessing in store for those persons that participate and be a part of what God is doing now. I've been saying it for a couple of weeks now that whatever, Lord, you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. So we thank God for all of our friends and loved ones that are, are supporting us and praying for us. Keep us in your prayers. Yes, God has a blessing in store for you. Yes. And we thank God for our honoring of our children, of course, and the parents. And I admonish all children. And I was doing some research, and I'm going to move in a few moments. But I was doing some research and looking at the Near Eastern uh, uh, the manuscripts and how which they had really implied this to honor your mother and father that your days would be long upon the land. And we often are in the mindset that it's just talking about young children. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, it can't be young children because That's most right. of them are not in position enough to take right. care of their elderly parents. Uh -huh. So I said, Lord, I'm looking into this a little further. But really, the, the blessing was that the continuation of the species and of the families was to be supported by adult children. Uh -huh. Because in their time and in Jesus' time, there were no nursing homes. Right. There were no senior citizen uh, facilities that was available for those aged parents. Yeah. So it was the responsibility of the male children and the female children that was of, of age to take on the leadership roles in the community to take care of their aged parents. And when they do that, there was a blessing attached to it. Yeah. So y'all listening to me. So when the adult children are able to help and to honor their mothers and their fathers, oh, how important it is. God said, I'm going to bless them because they're blessing you. And if you want to be blessed, Oh my God. Woo, if you want to be blessed, bless your mama and your dad. There was a blessing attached to it. And it was for the continuation of the races and of the species. God said, I'm going to bless you because now you teach your children to do the same. So when you do get old, you're not going to the nursing home. But God has a blessing in store for you if you would dishonor your mothers and your fathers. Amen. Y'all with me this morning. And I said, God, I think there's a, there's a point to that because these little guys can't take, but you tra train up a child right, in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he'll take care of you. Yeah. Right. Amen. When she is old, they'll take care of you. Amen. Not that you always will need it, but they'll be there because God has blessed them to be able to pour back into your life. And I look at the blessings of Abraham. Ooh, and I'm, I'm getting excited. I'm preaching right now. A little bit more than I, I say sometimes because of faith that's involved in this, it takes faith to operate in that fear because you don't know where God is going to take you as a result of you being a blessing to your parents. And as I look at Abraham and how that God promised him the blessing that he would be the father of many nations. And sometimes we think it's over when we get old. But if look at somebody and say, it's not over when you get older. God can use old people too. God can use the age to, and it's a faith thing. And as we by faith can trust God, and I say God instead of Abraham, he promised him that he would be the father of many nations. Yeah. And here goes Brother Abe, already 99 and a half years yeah. old. And you might as well look at it from our perspective. You might at that age be looking for a nursing home. Yes, sir. And you might be looking for a daycare, a place by which you might take care of the elderly citizens. Yes, so I believe because of faith was involved in the process, God took Abraham and basically told him, don't look for no nursing home. You better be looking for a babysitter. All right, sir. That's right. Because you're going to have the baby. Yes, sir. 
even though you're 99 and a half years old, who's going to keep the baby? Because God has a blessing attached to our faith. Y'all with me this morning? Hallelujah. God can turn that situation around. And as soon as you think it is all over, God said, you just begin. You're going to have to look in another direction because it's not over until God says it's over. Hallelujah. I got some Abrahams in here, don't we? Ah, hallelujah. Got some Abrahams that by faith he trusted God. He was fully persuaded that God was going to bless him as a result of his promise. Yes, and God has made us a promise. Amen. So hold on to the promise of God. Yes. It's not over. Don't think that your dreams have been dashed against the rock. Right. There is still hope for the hopeless. Right. There is still help for the helpless. Yes, God, I turn your situation around. Do I have a witness today? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Trust God. And God will intervene on your behalf. He did it for Abraham. And God knows he'll do it for you. Come on, give God a praise. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop right here. Amen. But we thank God for our guests. I'm going to get in trouble start calling names. But I appreciate those persons that took the time out to share with us yes, on this morning. I want you to stand for the next few moments. And we're going to go directly to the word of the Lord. Yes, sir. And I thank God for all of our mothers and all our ministering brothers and sisters yes. that are here. All of these missionaries and all of these evangelists that are here. God has got great things in store yes. for us. And we, as God's people, because of our assignment, we've got to be on our job. All right. We've got to do the teaching, do the preaching, Woo. and leave, do the possible yeah. and leave the impossible stuff up to God. All right. Somebody got to do it. Amen? Yeah. And there is a benefit about which we preach. There is a reason by why preaching is necessary. Yeah. How shall they hear without a preacher? Right. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Yeah. So God has some sent folk even in our midst, even on today. Yes, so I want to encourage you, keep on preaching, keep on teaching, and God will bless you for so doing. Bow your heads. Father, we thank you for this preaching moment. Yes. Hallelujah, this opportunity to share with this your people so great, oh God. God, we ask that you would word our mouth and give us what to say and how to say it. Use us, oh God. Let the power of the Holy Ghost yes. rest upon us even right now as we go forth. God, you know our heart and you know our desire. You know what it is that we need. God, meet every need that's in this house on today. Bless every soul, every woman, every man, every boy, and every kid. Do what need, hallelujah, be done in their lives. And as we give you the praise, God, we thank you now for answered prayer. Glory to God. We thank you, God, that what we prayed and what we beseech you and made supplication to you about, you've already started it in motion. Do it, God. Complete the work in their lives today in the name of Jesus and we'll be so thankful and so grateful to give your name the praise these and all of the blessings we ask in Jesus name and for his sake and all the people of God said amen. Amen. Because somebody say it's already working. It's already working. Mm -hmm. You may be seated. It's already working. Amen. So we're just looking for the fruition uh, and the finished product of which God is bringing to pass in our lives. As we get our Bibles this morning, I just want to talk to you a little while. Amen. We hollered a little bit last night. Amen. And, and rejoice and celebrate it. Amen. So whatever little voice we got tonight, y'all just bear with me. Let me kind of get through town. Today. Amen. Trying to get through town just so we can get out what the Lord has laid on our heart on this afternoon or this morning. Um, but as a, as a thought of emphasis on the day, I want you to uh, write it down. It says, seeing your future with faith and not fear. Seeing your future with faith and not fear. And as we enter into this new season, we're now uh, at the uh, prefaces of the summer month of June. We're right here. Summer, is, I feel like it's already here, but it's not actually until the equinox takes place in the 21st of June, 22nd of June, that we actually can say summer have arrived. But we're in a new season. And just like season change naturally, there are seasons in our lives that change as well. Many of us are not in the same zone or in the same season that we were maybe some months ago. And we're realizing that some of the promises of God that he's made unto us, that when we sow into that season, there come times that the fruition of those prayers will be made manifest in our lives. I was listening to you the other day. I'm not going to call your name. I'm just pointing at it. Amen. But I'm just saying that there were some prayers that had gone up and that we had believed God. And it was a, a corporate prayer that God would change some things around. And God did just that. Yes. And I thought about the fact, preacher, that when we sometimes we pray and we ask God to do things, and we'll be almost as rolling. 
the young woman and as they prayed for Peter as he was being, he was in captive, he was held captive in the prison and God sent an angel and took off the chains that was on him and loosed him and opened the gates and brought him back and brought him to the house by which prayer was being made. Brought him right to that house. And when it was knocking at the door, they were dead in there and I can say, oh God, right now God, in the name of Jesus, here for God deliver him now. God set him free, and God had already set him free. And he was trying to get in and try to let him know the good news and the glad tidings of what God had done for him. Hallelujah, but they were praying. And I said, keep on praying. The Lord is now, but there comes a time that we've got to accept what has been prayed. We're not surprised, we're not in amazement, but we just know that that's what God does. He answers prayer, doesn't he? So I appreciate the fact that God brought it to pass even in our lifetime. Yes. The prayer that has been made in a previous season. Yes. First there is a sowing, and but there also comes a time for harvest. Yes. And when God brings the harvest, we ought to thank God. Yes. We ought to rejoice. That's what the Israelites did. When they sowed their seed, there were festivals, there were commemorations of the harvest that was being brought because God had sent through the rain covenant the rain that brought forth the agriculture that allowed them to live from season to season. Right. So they had these celebrations. They were some celebrated folk. Yeah. And they celebrated every chance they got. Right. Took seven days. And I said, we ought to take the time out to give God break. We ought to take the time out to thank God for what he's already done. Because he's in that type of business. But we need to acknowledge the fact that it was God and not us. So as we move into this new season, this summer month and our new season in our spiritual lives, let us take time and take a pause out for station identification and give God the credit for what he's done. Anybody want to take the time out? Oh, my God. Take time out. Say, God, I realize there was nobody but you. You brought us. Hallelujah. You brought us through. Glory to God. You gave us another chance. Hallelujah. You gave us a, to survive our, our onslaught and our extreme circumstances. You gave us to come through it. And we thank you for so doing it. Hallelujah. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. God did it. Hallelujah. He did it for us. And he'll do it for you. But it takes, we ought to give him credit. Because thank you make room for more. And the more you thank God, that's just open the floodgates. Yes, any parent and any child has got any wherewithal at all, and you thank your parents and thank them for what they've done, yes. that make them want to do more. Right. You may not even deserve it. Uh -huh. <laughs> you may not have been the best child in the world. Yes, but when you say, you know what, Mom, I thank you so much. Yes, Dad, and if I just be doing your job. But when you, they show appreciation, yes, sometimes that gives you another perspective to want to do more for them. Do any parents know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. Amen. I say, okay, we got to do more now. They, they appreciate that little bit. What they going to think when, I, when we do this? Right. And that, I believe that sometimes when we look at it from that perspective, that's what God does for us. Thank you. Make room for more. Amen. So keep on thanking him and keep on giving him praise. Yes. Now, as we look at this, and as I said, that seeing your future with I, with faith, not fear. Uh -huh. Fear has torment. Yes, We're going to be talking about different aspects of fear in a few moments, but faith and fear does not coexist. We're going to either have to have faith or we're going to have to have fear. Yes, sir. So as we look at it with the eyes of faith and with the eyes of faith and not fear, and referring to these times by which we live and this season that we're in, the gospel writer mentioned that there will come a time when men's heart will fail them for fear. Yes, and looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. St. Luke, the 16th, the 21st chapter, 26th verse, talks about that day. And we're living in that time now. There is so much going on politically and things that are happening on such a rapid pace yes. that we sometimes can't keep up of all the changes that's taking place. Mm -hmm. But the church of Jesus Christ must take a stand. Yes. And we are standing for holiness. Yes. Help me say holiness is right. Holiness is right. Amen. And we're going to keep on teaching and preaching that until the Lord comes. But uh -huh. we have to set the example. And we are the examples and we're not the excuses. Right. So when we know that these things are going to come and that fear will sometimes inevitably set in, we've got to be prepared to look at it with the eyes of faith. Uh -huh. And when he concludes that particular section and encourages the believers in Christ, uh, that when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. Hallelujah. And lift their heads 
glory to God for your redemption draweth nigh. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. We said that when we were going through, we used the example of Job last week. Yes. And as Job dealt with his, yes. from his extreme circumstances, yes. he had to first of all look back. Yes, and as we say, I'm told, look back and wonder how I got over. Yes. Job looked back first and foremost and says, naked came out into the world and naked shall I return. Yes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes. Then he had to look up. And there comes a time that once we look back, we got to look up and look to the hill from which cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord. And we realize that if we're going to get help, it has to come from God. And then we've got to do what? Look forward. And Job looked forward, though the skin worms eat up my flesh, I believe that in my flesh I shall see God. Yes, so he had that hope within him that knowing after looking in all of these other places, he was able to go forward and realize that it ultimately God's sovereignty was going to prevail. Amen. And even in your particular situation, God's sovereignty will prevail. Amen. He is in control. And we will not understand all that God does in our lives, but I guarantee you, if you can hold on by faith, God will reveal all of these things unto us. We'll realize by which we've gone through certain circumstances that we couldn't explain. We could not make sense of it. And we want to question God. I want to get to that today. And say, Lord, why are you allowing this to happen to me? But God knew exactly what he was doing. And God blessed him as a result of it. So we see these things. And we've got to know that we've got to look up and our redemption draweth nigh. Yes. And I've been talking about our vision yes. and how we see things and of late and how important it is going forward into our future. Yes. Jesus had a lot to say about how we are to see things. Yes. In the book of St. Matthew, can we go there quickly in the sixth oh, chapter yes, and that sixth yes. chapter and verses 23 and 20, 22 and 23. Let's see what Jesus says about it. We know what everybody else said, but let's see what Jesus says right, about sir. the 22nd verse and the 23rd verse of the 6th chapter of the book of St. Matthew. Thank God for all of you that are here. Y'all bear with me a few moments. Amen. Amen. Thank God. The 22nd verse. And it reads, as Jesus said, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, and I'm reading from the King James, mm -hmm. thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, mm -hmm. thy whole body shall be full of darkness. Mm -hmm. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. Yes, sir. So Jesus makes it crystal clear that you got to have a good eye. Right. Amen. I, I played bas uh, ball, baseball for a long time. And uh, I was a catcher when I was in the Little League. And we worked our way up all the way through the ranks. And we had... Uh, certain things we were taught by coaches and how to have a good eye, what to swing at and what not to swing at when it comes to being a batter in the batter's box. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Any sports people in here, let me make sure I'm in the right audience. Because I, we went through that, that training and I said, you just can't be swinging at everything that's not in the strike zone. Right. Just swinging all willy-nilly all over the place. But you got to have a good eye and know what's hittable. Is that a correct word? But you got to know what's being able to be hit with the bat as it meets the ball. And we had a gentleman, he couldn't play field at nothing. He couldn't catch worth a dime. But the boy had a good eye. Uh -huh. He could knock the ball out the park. Uh -huh. And I was in one eye. I said, why are you keeping him in the lineup? But because he may not catch the ball, don't hit him in the ball now. He's going to miss it. But let him get to the plate. He's going to make up for all of his mistakes uh -huh. because the boy had a good eye. He knew where the strike zone was, and he had that that that, that ability to, to know what was swingable, what was hittable, and what not to swing at. Right. Couldn't strike him out because he was knowing that if it came down the pipe, he was going to hit it and, right. and do what needed to be done. So we kept him in the lineup just for that sake. But we had a backup so that when he missed the ball, we had somebody to come and cover for him because he probably was going to miss it if it was hit to him. So what I'm saying that to say that we got to have a good single eye. You can't waste your energy on swinging and getting and wasting all of your time on trivial things. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Because we exhaust our energy on things that are not even really worth the time and the energy to be fighting. So when the larger things come up, we are already exhausted. We are already spent. And we can't really do the necessary business that we need to conduct because we've already, already wasted a lot of time in doing it. So we don't want to give the devil that much credit, but have a single eye. 
have a single vision. Concentrate on one thing at a time. And when you do that, you will be able to have that single eye Amen. that God talked about. And having a good eye when we view our future with faith. Jesus is saying that if you do not see things clearly and truthfully, you are really living in darkness. Amen. And the bottom line is that you're going to miss out on what God has for you and your life and even for your families. You're going to miss the wonderful thing that God has prepared and has in store for you and for your future because you just can't see it. Uh -huh. So if you can see it, you can be it. Uh -huh. yes, yes. Hallelujah. And I say these 10 two-letter words, the me that I see is the me that I be. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's so right. you can't see, y'all don't hear me. Yes, Thank you, Holy Ghost. The me that I see, if I can't see myself as being a prosperous person or being a person that's moving progressively forward, if I can see myself as only being somebody that's always life has thrown me a bad hand, and I'm speaking negatively about everything that happens in my life, right. guess what? Right. Our words are self fulfilling prophecy. Yes, yes. And we will be that person. So you got to be careful what you say out your mouth. Yes. Tell you, baby, you got to be careful what you say out your mouth. Yes. I am victorious. I am a winner. Amen. Yes. And we yes. got to keep reforming. You may not be winning now, but if you keep on swinging and have a good eye, yes. you'll be able to hit the ball yes. out the park. Y'all say amen. amen. <laughs> now we have heard the expression, what you see is what you yes. get. And in many ways, that is actually biblically sound. Mm -hmm. And I want to look at that statement and the implications of that idea through what the scripture has to say. Let's go back to the story that, that involves Moses and the Hebrew people, those formerly enslaved persons that were enslaved by the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. And y'all know the story, but I just want to revisit that for a few moments. Yeah. And the implication that, that the idea has through us and that how God free this enslaved people after 430 years of bondage. He let them go free. And now, here's the background just for the story. Let us take a look at Numbers the 13th chapter. I'm going to be here a little and there a little and line upon line and precept upon precept. This is Sunday morning, y'all. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. And I want to just share with you what the Bible says concerning how that we must see our future with eyes of faith. Now, in that 13th chapter of the book of Numbers, and as we read, it talks about um, how that God had promised these free slaves a homeland of their own, had yeah. And he calls it the promised land. Yeah. He said, I'm going to set you, uh, set you free from Egypt, yeah. and I'm going to take you to the promised land. Mm -hmm. Now, this land represents their future. Yeah. They were formerly enslaved. But now they do have a future. God promised them that they had a future. Yes, sir. It represented their inheritance uh -huh. that God wanted them to enjoy. And you've got to see yourself inheriting what God wants you yes, to sir. enjoy. Yes, God has great things for us. Yes, sir. As we say, but whereof we're glad. We've got to know that great things are coming. And if only we can expect the negative thing that the devil tried to convince us. And I say this as well. Even though he feeds our minds with these thoughts, I've come to the conclusion you need to fact check your thoughts and realize that what all that the devil's feeding you, that's fact check. They said, don't nobody love you. Fact check that. Somebody does love you. God loves you. If nobody else loves you, you've got to know that God, I thought I don't get a hand from you. If nobody else loves you, God loves you. So the devil is a liar. He's lying, trying to convince you that nobody cares about you. Somebody do care about you. For we have not in high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but with an old point. Y'all ain't praying for me today. How do you tempt it like as ye are, but yet without sin? He cares for us. Tell yourself, Jesus cares for me. He is my high priest. Hallelujah. He cares about me. And what happens, so I fact check that when it tells you nobody cares. Nobody loves you, but you're just out here by yourself. The devil is a liar. No. I'll go as far as to say that there are saints that care about you, yeah. that genuinely care, not trying to talk about you, right. but genuinely care about you, yeah. genuinely praying for you, yeah. genuinely trusting God that God's going to intervene. Yeah. Hallelujah yeah. on your behalf. Yeah. So when we look at it from this perspective, that promised land, God wanted them to enjoy that. 
And this land will become the land of Israel. Y'all have to read it. I won't read it in its entirety. I'm trying to move quickly here. But as we read that, after crossing the desert and enduring the wilderness, these people come to the edge of the promised land. And God begins to tell Moses to choose out 12 men. 12 representatives from each tribe a man. And these representatives, of course, they go ahead and to everybody else and then spied out the land. They went ahead of everybody else and saw what the land beheld. That's right. And I want you to go ahead and check out everything and return with a vision report. Y'all write down vision report. They return with a vision report. And sometimes you got to think ahead and you can see yourself in the future and you've got to look better than you do right now. But if you can only see yourself as right now, as present situation, you may not be able to see yourself in the future. Might not be able to see yourself being free, delivered, and set free. You may not be able to see yourself financially stable and not living from hand to mouth. Y'all not going to talk back to me. But you got to see yourself in that position. Because as we see ourselves, oftentimes we find ourselves in that same position. Position. Yes, so they went forth with a vision report, and of course, the return, and it was a fact finding mission. So, in other words, it was a vision trip. Yes, and Moses says, Go into the new land that represents our future Amen. and find out everything that you can. That's right. How many of y'all have found out what your end result should be? My God. As we look at our current system, the way, where do you see yourself five years from now? And if you can't see yourself moving forward, guess what? You don't have a plan. That's right. You've got to have a plan. Amen. Because if you don't plan, you do plan to fail. That's still a plan. Y'all ain't coming back to me. So you got to have a plan. So they had to come back. And that, of course, we find out what it is like. And I want you to come back and report to us everything that you have seen. Glory to God. Numbers 13, verses 17 through 20. I won't read it, but y'all can. Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain. They entered into that promised land. And of course, you know, the Bible gives them to know that after they had searched out the land, yes, he sir. wants them to bring back samples of what they saw. Yes, sir. And I said, God, help us to visualize. Help us to feel like I see the sky is the limit. I see the invisible. I, 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 I'm, I'm looking at those things that I really, faith is seeing what we cannot behold at the same time. So faith calleth those things that be not as though they were. You may not have it in your possession, but you can see it. Eventually, it's going to come to pass. Amen. So they were to bring back the sample, the physical evidence of the land. And verse 20, I'm going to read that and then I'm going to move a little further. And it says, and what the land is, and whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood or therein or not, and be ye of good courage and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first strike, first ripe grapes. And y'all know the story of Eskel and how they went and cut down the branch of the grape uh, that was there. And it was so large that it took two men to carry it back. You ever seen, was that the promised land grapes? The devil they got down in the store. Yes, them some big grapes. Oh, Y'all yeah. see my name. Never seen grapes that big before. Yes, they must be from the promised land. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I, that's an example of the, the, the fruit that the fruit of the land. The land that was eventually will be shown to them. A land that flowed with milk and honey. Yes. So Moses did that. Now why Moses? Why did you do this? Mm -hmm. And Moses was a good leader. Uh -huh. Watch this. And I want you to write this down. Before people can succeed with a goal, they have to see the goal. Okay, Pastor. What did we say? Before people can succeed with a goal, they have to see the goal. And we can only accomplish that uh, the impossible if we can first see it in with our mind. Amen. Everything that has ever been accomplished in history started with an idea in somebody's mind, didn't it? It was their genius, as I heard. Amen. The bishop talks and says that every man, God has given to every man a genius. Yes. That by which he can succeed. Thank you for finishing that up for me. Praise God. So God has given us that genius yes. by which we can succeed. Yes. But you have to imagine. You have to see it. Sometimes you have to taste it. And but you definitely have to visualize it. You have to see it with your spiritual eye. 
And this is why it is so important for us in this season to see God's vision for our lives. And I believe that God is moving us forward, but he's not going to force us into that season. We've got to willingly comply and go along with God's plan. So before people can succeed with a goal, they got to do what? Have to first be able to see the goal. Now, Numbers 13, chapter verse 21 through 23, I think I will read that just for clarity. The 13th chapter of the book of Numbers, verses 21 through 23. And it reads, and for so they went on, went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rebo. Then men came to Amon, and they ascended to the south and came into Hebron. And uh, I can't pronounce that one, but y'all read it when you can. And the children of Anak were there. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zon in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Eschol and cut down the grapes a branch which was cluster of grape, and they buried between two men a staff, uh -huh. and they brought of the pomegranates and of the pears. So when they brought back the physical evidence, didn't they? Yes, and of course, in the, that was a time of harvest, and the promised land was so fruitful and so prosperous, and they were bringing back the giant proof of evidence of the land. Yeah. Yeah. So now after seeing us searching the land for 40 days, the men returned to Aaron and unto Moses, and they reported of the whole community that what they had seen. Mm -hmm. And they showed them the fruit. We, this is what we saw, and this is what this land possesses. Mm -hmm. And now all of the sound, but now all that sounds very promising, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But there was a problem. Mm -hmm. Because it, it was has to do with their vision. Uh -huh. right. This is why I want you to share with you what I'm talking about even yes, on today. Certain amount of those, and we're familiar with the story of Joshua and Caleb, and we're familiar with the report of the ten spies and those that brought back a negative report. Yes, sir. So two of the spies, of course, Joshua and Caleb, looked at their future with eyes of faith. Yes, sir. But the other ten and the twelve looked at the future with eyes of fear. Yes, sir. They saw the giants that were in the land, right. and they came up with this, uh, the acclamation that we were even in our own sight as grasshoppers. Yes, sir. Look at somebody and say, who told you that? Who told you that? Because sometimes we see ourselves as so small and so insignificant and so not worthy, we sometimes cancel out what God has for us. They didn't have to do it. Sometimes we do it to ourselves. And sometimes we are our worst enemy because God is able to bring us through if we can only trust him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And that they had that negative report. And when they came back with that, they tell them that the heart of the people melted. Yes, they can say, God, you brought us out here into this wilderness to yes. kill us. But then, of course, we know that their report of Joshua and Caleb said, let us go up at once because they are bred for us. Yes. We're not worried about the giant because we know somebody that's a giant killer. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. But there, there seemed to be a ratio today for every one truth there are approximately five lives right, to try to nullify that truth. Right. And we can see it politically. I don't want to call no names. Uh -huh. But lies seem to be of the popular persuasion now. Yes, sir. People would rather sometimes believe a lie than the truth. Right. But I know the word is true. The truth shall make you free. Right. Hallelujah. Y'all with me this morning? Thank you. Now watch this. I, if, if me as a preacher, if you as a preacher or a missionary or evangelist telling you the truth, telling people the truth makes you uncomfortable, yes. don't blame the truth. Yes, sir. Blame the lie that made you comfortable. Uh -huh. Do I need to repeat that? Yes, sir. <laughs> That's it. If me as a preacher, if, if your preacher, your minister, your pastor yes. uh, are telling you the truth mm -hmm. makes you uncomfortable, uh -huh. don't blame the truth that's being proclamated uh -huh. over the gospel, uh, over the pulpit, uh -huh. blame the lie that made you comfortable. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And yes, sometimes people can get comfortable in lies. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right. It's a comfort zone for some. Yes. But we know that the truth is the only thing. You can't get saved right with wrong preaching. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You got to make sure that it's what God is saying. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion yes, that they should believe a lie. Second Thessalonians tells us about it in second chapter, verse 11. The truth has become so unpopular mm. in our day 
but somebody has to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, so help us God. Right. So now are you looking at this new, this new season that we're in with eyes of faith or with eyes of fear? Or are you expecting more of the same thing that you're going through year after year and season after season repetitively? This being on a recycling basis. So there has to be a change. It has to be a change in your vision. Uh -huh. What you see. Or are you expecting something great? And how many of you are expecting something great? Yes, I believe this is the season for greatness. The season for a harvest. And God is allowing us now to experience it in our lifetime. You don't have to be dead. Something powerful in your life is going to happen during this new season. Can somebody say amen? amen. But you got to see it with an eye of faith. You can't be fearful and say, I don't deserve it. Well, who else does? All right, sir. All right. That's right. Amen. Somebody got to get it. So here is what happens when you look at the new season with fear instead of faith. I want y'all to write this down, and I'm moving swiftly. Take your time, though. First thing and foremost, that what happens when we look at it with fear, we overemphasize the negative in our lives. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's look at verse 27 and 28 of the same numbers. 27 and 28. We overemphasize the negative in our life. Listen to what they said. And they told him and said, We came into the land whither thou sendest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, they say, But. but. So, but almost cancels out everything that was said That's right. previously. That's right. You just told us it was a good land, so well, what's the problem? That's right. The problem was their vision. Nevertheless, watch what it says the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled, and they are very great, and more. Over we saw the children of Anak there. It put a negative spin yes, on what they had just yes, said. Yes, so we overemphasize the negative. And when you overemphasize the negative, it creates a lot more stress in your life than God intended you to go through. Yes. All right. We yes. put ourselves through that process of stress and try to overcome the doubt. Now, of course, our eyes have seen it, but yet it's still something down on the inside would not allow us to accept yes, what God has already right. shown. Right. And when you major on the minors and minor on the majors, yes. your vision is skewed. Yes, that's true. Because you're looking at all this big stuff. Oh, there's the giant. But look yes. at the land. We got to do something to get these grapes. That's right. That's right. I'm just saying, be careful of what you focus on. Because that is what is going to directly affect your happiness mm -hmm. in this new season. Yes, right. Don't focus on the negative. Look at your neighbor and tell them, don't focus on the negative. Don't focus, on the negative. focus on the positive. Focus on the positive. Look what God has for us. Yes. What do I have to do to get it? Yes. So we focus on the negative when I see my future with eyes of fear. Mm -hmm. The spies had that problem. Yes. The second trap is this. And I'm moving. Y'all with me? I pay too much attention to what others are doing. All right, right, sir. And this is a major problem because we watch, we watching everybody else and not looking at what God is doing. But look at Sister Fullbush, look at Sister Watermelon, look at Brother y'all gonna give you this morning. Amen. And we sometimes pay too much attention to what others are doing. Numbers the thirteenth chapter, verse twenty nine. We're still there, the twenty ninth verse. Let me read that real quickly. And the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites. Who are they talking about all these folks? Didn't yes, God tell them to go and, and yes, take the land? So why are you looking at all of these other uh, things by which will cause obstacles in your life? Right. And the Canaanites dwell in the sea and by the coast of Jordan. They looked at all, they was paying too much attention to what others were doing. They're focusing on the beauty of the value of the land, but what are they saying here? They should have been focusing on the beauty of the land, yes, the sir. milk and honey, and the grapes, and the pomegranates, and the figs, and they're saying, don't, there won't be any room for us, because look at all of these folks that's already here. All right. And how many of y'all know that what God had for you is for you? Yes, you don't have to scheme, you don't have to connive, you don't have to lie. You don't have to sell nobody out. Y'all don't get it today because folks will sell people out for position. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. They'll sell them out because they want to be in the position. They want to be in the limelight and they'll sell them out. But God is saying in this to me, spiritually speaking, that you sometimes pay too much attention to what others are doing. Yeah. Hallelujah. And all of the good of the land is already taken by other tribes. That's basically what they were saying. They already got this. What's left for us? 
It creates stress in your life. We serve a God that's more than enough. God does not exhaust his resources because he blessed his sister or because he blessed that brother. You got to know that what God did for them, he'll do exceeding and abundantly more for you if you can only look through it with eyes of faith. Hallelujah. All of the good. Hallelujah. So, and we don't want to develop that scarcity mentality, meaning that there's not enough for us. God got more and enough than what we can expect. How many of y'all know God got more than enough? We serve a God that's more than enough. Hallelujah. Thank you, God got something for you as well. Don't develop a scarcity mentality. It creates stress in your life. People are going to psychiatrists and all of these other therapists in order to relieve the stress. And all we got to do oftentimes is focus on what God has already said. But we bring a lot of this on ourselves. All of the good women are taken. All of the good men are taken. All of the decent jobs are already filled. The devil is alive. Glory to God. God got something for you. Mm, I feel like preaching now. <laughs> God has more in store for you. Help us say, God got more in store for you. If you can see it, glory to God. Stop judging yourself by what everybody else is seen to have. God got better and some more. Thank you, Jesus. Learn how to trust God by faith. That's a trap. The second trap was I pay a, m too much attention to what others are doing. Yes, and I'm moving, let me move a little further here. Third thing I want to bring to your attention is, the third thing is underestimating the abilities that God has given me. God has positioned us oftentimes. Some of us have gone to school and made the necessary preparations and done all of the necessary groundwork and foundational things to be able to be successful and to be prosperous in this world. But sometimes we disqualify us. Yes, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Amen. Because seeing your future with eyes of fear causes you to yes. bury your yes. talents. Yes, sir. Yes. Look at somebody and say, don't dumb down your talents. Don't dumb down your talents. It makes somebody else feel good. It makes somebody else feel good. Feel good. Right. Because sometimes we are dumbed down because we don't want you to feel uncomfortable. Yes. Feel uncomfortable. That's right. Yes, that's right. I make no excuse. Yeah. Right. I heard Brother Westbrook speak to my mind now. And I know we were praying over the food. I make no excuse for the things that we have. Help me, sis. You know what I'm talking about. For the things that we have, the Lord has provided. And we are grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy. If God has blessed you with a particular talent or a particular ability, don't dumb down. Right. Amen. To make other people feel comfortable. Yes. I'm saying be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yes. Y'all hear me today. Amen. I'm sanctified. I'm going to tell you I'm going to say, but I'm like, no. That's right. What I know, I know. Yes. Amen. Amen. And what you know, God gave it to you. Uh -huh. So because seeing your future with eyes of fear causes you to bear it, your talent. Uh -huh. Look at numbers 13 and 31. And I'm moving a little further here. What can a man that went up with him? saying, we be not able, look at the negative report, to go yes, up sir. against the people, for they are stronger than we. Yes, Who told you that? Yes, sir. How you know? Uh -huh. They may be tall, but that's all. Uh -huh. yes, and we say now, the bigger they are, the harder they are. Uh -huh. And it's not the size of the man that's in the fight, but it's the size of the fight that's in the man. You can't underestimate short people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not talking about yes, nobody. Short people got a certain tenacity. Yes, you got to be careful. Yes, sir. The short people will hurt you. Yes, but I'm just saying that they're, they're underestimation. They underestimated their very own abilities. Yes, sir. Because they say that they are stronger than us. Uh -huh. And they not necessarily are stronger than you. Uh -huh. Let me finish reading. Because when we read it, I said, I can't, I can. These two are both right. Because fear creates some self-fulfilling prophecies in our lives. Uh -huh. It is going to limit you your entire life. Uh -huh. If you put that out there, you are going to miss opportunities because you've already minimized yourself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You're going to experience some situations and waste of the talent that God has already given you. Uh -huh. That God put it in you from the very beginning. Uh -huh. 
And you know the story of the parable of a talent. The man held back and buried his talent because of fear. Uh -huh. He was fearful of the fact that, that this, this landowner or this householder was going to be very critical of the fact that he wanted back what he had given him, uh -huh. but he really wanted him to expand it. Because the man held back and buried his talent because of fear. And false evidence all the time, we always say that appears real. That's really what fear is. And the master rebuked him and called him wicked. So how did you get wicked? Because you are fearful. Because you fail to trust God. And I have, of course, a personal question for you. What are you seeing yourself? What are you setting yourself up for in this new season? Are you looking at your own abilities as I am inadequate or I am incapable or I'm not worthy or I'm not ready? The spies saw themselves as inadequate, didn't they? Yes. The verse is 32 and you can read it in 33. They saw themselves as insects yes, sir. waiting to be devoured. Yes. And when you see yourself as small as a cockroach, as they say in, in Africa, uh -huh. we sometimes have the facility to believe that they are less than human. And that's what caused some of the atrocities because they didn't even see them as human beings. They slaughtered thousands of people. And that's what happened. They feel like we're sometimes in an insect category, waiting to be devoured. Their self-image was damaged. And I thank God for self-esteem. You gotta have some self-esteem. Y'all know that, right? You came out. I'm not you gotta blow your own horn sometime, but you gotta have some self-esteem and some self-respect for yourself. Yes. They saw themselves as small. And what is even worse, they projected their fears on others. Uh -huh. so you got to be careful of the fact. You see yourself in that and you hear it rehearsed and reiterated day in and day out. After a while, you begin to believe it yourself. Yes. They came back with this negative report. And I'm just making it plain as I can. Yes. They came back with a negative report and it caused the heart of the people to melt. Yes. They lost hope. They said, well, that's what they saw. They hadn't even been into the land yet. Right. But because they heard what the others right. had said, right. so tell right. somebody, stop feeding people with negativity. Stop feeding people with negativity. Amen. Keep that stuff to yourself. Keep it to yourself. Amen. 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 Yeah. And I'm, this is what I found out. When I get around folks that all they talking is negativity, I excuse myself. Yes, sir. That's right. I say deuces. deuces. Y'all excuse me. Y'all let no preachers say deuces. I'm out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not listening to it. I don't need that. I don't have to need to contend with that now. I'm trying to go somewhere now. Right. Right? But if you are a hindrance, I've got to find me another company to deal with. Right. Y'all ain't liking this Amen. kind of preaching this morning. Good. Good. Now the fourth trap, and I'm going to close in a few moments. Uh -huh. The fourth trap of your vision or the vision with fear instead of faith is I infect others with my negativity. Do you, hallelujah, do you know what fear is contagious? Verse 32 says they spread an evil or bad report about the land. It was trash talk. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Hurry. Yes, sir. They hung out with critics. Yes. So don't hang out with critics. Mm -hmm. Don't hang out with people that are all, that all they have to say is something negative. Mm -hmm. Don't hang out with folks that are always murmuring Jeez. and complaining. Jeez. It ought to make you sick. If you are trying to look at life from a positive perspective, divorce yourself from negative people. Yes, sir. And I heard Bishop Westbrook again this morning. Yes, sir. If you want to fly with eagles, you got to divorce yourself from your hen house ways. Because yes, eagles don't hang with chickens. <laughs> they say, the eagles don't hang with chickens. Right. Don't hate Hallelujah. Divorce yourself from negative people. If you don't, their negativity will infect you. Yeah. The fifth trap I'm going through uh, is I make myself miserable. Mm. Numbers of 14, chapter verses 1. And I'm going to the next chapter for a few verses. In verses 1 through 2, uh, it says, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And yeah. the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness. You brought us out here to kill us. Yeah. They made themselves miserable. Yeah. They made other people miserable. Yeah. They wanted to stone Moses. 
Yes. And all Moses was doing was obeying God. Yes. The folks cried all night and started complaining about their leaders and their situations of which they had not even seen with their very own eyes. Mm -hmm. Because they, they fed off the energy from that negative right. ten, cry, ten spy group. That's right. They were relying totally on the opinion of someone else. Yes. Look at somebody and say, don't, look, don't, don't put all your eggs in that basket on right. other people's opinion. Because right. they could be wrong. But you need to get among faith talks. Yes, sir. Yes, we need to get among folk that believe God. Yes, you can do it. Yes. Misery loves what? Y'all haven't finished yet. Misery loves company. Yes. Folk that are miserable want other people to be miserable. Right. Don't yes. And you know you can make yourself sick by what you focus on. Yes. You can be tripping about your own paranoia thoughts. Yes. What the devil is feeding you. You're going through that process. This, this virus is going to kill us all. Yes. And look at y'all still here. Amen. Some folks thought that we were going to get wiped out by the virus. But how many believers I got in here now Amen. that know that they didn't kill us? Amen. You might have been impacted by it, but you're still here. Amen. I'm a living witness. I'm still here. Almost now. Almost, but not yet. <laughs> Glory to God. God had, a, had work for me to do. I said, oh, no, this is not going to take me out. I'm not going out like this. God, you're not going to let me go out here like that. So that paranoia and the devil trying to talk to your mind, so you might as well give up. You might as well throw in the towel. You've done enough. But it's not over yet until God says it's over. Glory to God. And it didn't kill us, but it made us better. That, that when doesn't kill us makes us better. It helps develop us. Glory to God. And thank God for it. Yeah, and I will have, of course, the point that you are afraid to come out of the house. God, I say, God, help me to go about my daily business. Yeah. Do what I have to do. Prayer with precaution. I'm not trying to tell you you have to be reckless, and we need to take the necessary precaution. Yeah. But I'm saying yeah. prayer with yeah. precaution. Yeah. I'm moving out by faith, yeah. knowing that God will protect me. Yeah. Somebody yeah. ought to tell God, thank yeah. you. Yeah. God has not given us the spirit of fear, because fear is a spirit. Fear is a spirit. But of God has given us a spirit of power and of love and of a what? Sound mind. So don't let this stuff make you crazy. Don't let it make you miss your testimony. Don't change your testimony for a temporary situation. Hold fast to your testimony. Keep your mind on the Lord and his protection and provision over your life. We ought to give God a praise right there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There are all these things that are coming to fear. There is no temptation that has taken you but such that is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be what? Able to bear. Hallelujah. So whatever you've gone through, God will give you the strength. If he brought you to it, he'll bring you through. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, God, for the hymnologist. And we're standing. And we, I want you to stand because I'm going to close in a few moments. Hymnologist wrote the hymn and says, I trust in God. And my Father watches over me. Whatever may be upon the land or on the rolling sea. Come what may from day to day, my heavenly Father. Yes. Watches over me. Yes, Makes the rose an object of his care. Hallelujah. Guides the eagle through the pathless air. Hallelujah. Surely he, he will remember me. Yes, My heavenly father watches over me. He says, I trust in God. Yes, because I know he cares for me. Yes, on the mountain peak or even on the stormy sea. Yes. Though the billows may roll, in many of our lives they do roll. I know he keeps my soul. My heavenly father watches over me. Amen. Now, here is the antidote about the developing a life, a vision of faith. I couldn't leave you out there like that without giving you an antidote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The minority report. Mm -hmm. yeah. The crowd is not always right. Amen. 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 Number the 13th chapter, verse 30. Glory to God. It says in that, third, that 30th verse, when I, when I read it, and Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once yes. and possess it, yes. for we are well able yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. to overcome. Yes, 
It changed the whole dynamic. If we had just listen to this man, it changed the whole dynamic. You have to oppose fear. He says, let's let us go up at once and possess it. Because with the help of God, we are well able to possess it. Matter of fact, he said they prayed for us. We'll eat them up. Okay. Right. Joshua, Joshua says in Numbers the 14th chapter, y'all read it when you get home. It says, don't rebel, neither fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. If the Lord delight in us, if the Lord delight in us, if you do what you're supposed to do, he will bring us into this land and give it us. The land that floweth with milk and honey. Amen. That's the illustration, and I, the illustration goes back to the fact, I said, what do you mean? And I heard part of the message of the lady, of course, during the women's convention, she worked on milk and honey. I'm not going to mess with that part, but I will say this. In my illustrative moment, I say, now what happens during this land of plenty that God has prepared for us all? And I could just see the cows that were uninterrupted. That's what they say, that it was just laying. They had so much lesion, so much grass. They eat on the green grass, and they were their udders were so pure yes. that when they laid up against the tree, yes. and the bees in the tree had made their hives, and they yes. were so unattended that they had the opportunity to just make as much honey as they wanted. Yes. So when the milk that was in the udders of the cow oozed out of the of the cow that was laid up against the tree, yes. and the yes. and the honey from the beehive. Rolled down the tree. It was a land that was flowing with milk and honey. All right now. Undisturbed. Pristine and what God had planned for them. That was their future. Yes. That's what God had for them. Amen. Don't miss out. That's what I want to encourage you with today. Look at your future with eyes of faith. And I want every head bowed and every eye closed. And as we trust God and believe him now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I said what you told me to say. And God, we want that in this season that it will be different. Things will not continue as they always have. That there will be a difference. Because we're now looking through eyes of faith and not fear. God, we realize that you have given us uh, not the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Bless this people now with new vision, new direction, a new energy, with the power of the Holy Ghost going before us, with the favor of God upon their lives as they endeavor, they'll go about their endeavors for you. Yes. Bless them now in the name of Jesus. God, I know that you can. I know that you're able. You can do anything but fail. Help us to trust you, even if we cannot trust you. God, we decree it and declare it now that it is so, and so it is in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody, say amen. If you believe it, give God some praise. Hallelujah. If you believe it, show up. Give him some glory. Give him some honor. He is indeed worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Grab hold of faith. Grab hold of faith. Faith, faith, faith. That call that no thing that be not as though they were. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah.